Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dr. Gordon Meterson. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody here. Calm down. Calm down. Stop acting like a bunch of f monkeys. From the moment that your parents decided to boink and you came swimming out of your father's taters into your mother's your fate was already decided. It was over before you were even born. When your genetic makeup was formed after you were conceived, it was already over. By the end of the first trimester, your fate was already written in stone. Guys, I want to show you this. Rhonda Rosie and Travis Brown are expecting their first child. For those of you who don't know, they were both professional athletes. And Travis Brown is 6'5". This is what the doctor had to say about their child. So we are measuring at 11 weeks and 5 days today. Wow. And you are 11 weeks. So this is when big kids start to be big and they kind of show off after the first trimester. Well, this is Travis Brown's baby. Yes. <laughs> Poor little man. You were destined to get no bitches. You were destined to get addicted to lowly hentai. You were even destined to watch this video. Or maybe you weren't, you know? Maybe you're not limited by any of that stuff. The sky is the limit. The world is your oyster. Just never give up. Keep on trying and you can be anything you want to be. Ooh. I'm telling you guys, anything is possible. Don't ever get up. Keep Keep grinding, keep hustling, shoot for your dreams. You can do anything you want, I'm, I promise you. You just have to take that first step, take that hard step of actually doing something. Are you sure about that? Which one is it, you know? Because these are two different messages I'm hearing from, from different people. And I want to get to the bottom of it. Well, it turns out that it's it's pretty complicated, and it's kind of both of them, but it's uh, it's mostly the first one. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not like smart or anything. Anytime I say anything smart on this video, I'm just copying people with degrees. And also, this is just a presentation of ideas. It's not. It shouldn't be taken like a fucking academic journal or something. Also, this video might have some pretty harsh truths in it. But my intention is not to to get people to give up or lose hope or whatever. It's is my opinion that that knowing the truth, even if you know these truths are hard to swallow at first, it only serves to help you. Even if you're like you're all about self improvement, knowing these things helps you. I can think of plenty of times where knowing the truth would have helped me a lot. It would have saved me from a lot of pain and uh, confusion and anguish. You know. People people just say shit to make you feel better. They just sell you white lies. It definitely doesn't help you, you know? It just makes you delusional. And that's not the mind state you want to have if you're trying to improve yourself at all. Because you're going you're not going to accept what you can't change. And that's going to just that's going to hurt you mentally. I just want to be honest because I feel like these truths really helped me. You know, and I think everybody lies about them. I think these ideas should be more mainstream because they're very important and they have a lot of scientific backing. The truth can guide you, you know. I'm just going to give you what I've found and whether or not you use it to develop self-limiting beliefs or use them to take the proper steps going forward is completely up to you. Take my little friend here, for example. I'm looking down at him right now and I'm not impressed, you know. He's, it's a pretty disappointing sight. So I have a few options. I could either be like, Oh no, I'm never gonna please a woman. It's totally over for me. My little shrimp, it's just so pathetic. Uh, I hate you. Or, alternatively, I could accept, Hey, my dong isn't great. You know, I'm never gonna be Johnny Sins. I'm never gonna hit him. I'm never gonna hit it like Jordi El Nino Pollo. But that's okay. Because I can keep moving forward. I could put in the work, put in the hours, you know, maybe buy some online courses and, you know, learn how to really fuck good. Learn how to stroke it nice, you know, learn how to really work the sun. Anyways, when we're talking about genetic determinism, one of the main, like, uh, studies we can use to really isolate how much genetics matter is by looking at twins who were separated at birth, who had different environments, but... You know, identical twins share 100% of their genetics. A pair of separated identical twins that are often cited are James Arthur Springer and James Edward Lewis. 
they're pretty much the exact same physically uh, same height same face they had the same job they were a sheriff they had the same habit of biting their nails they had the same food preferences both of them were married twice and their wife's names were Linda and Betty both of them had a dog growing up that they named Toy. They even both named their son the same thing. And this is this is a pretty crazy thought because, you know, naming your, your son or your dog, that's like a whim, you know? That's something you think you would just come up with. And to think that even that does not escape the, the determinism of your genetics, even that doesn't, like, escape the cause and effect of, like, your genetics brought up that thought that's pretty nuts you know but it's not like all separated twins have this many like uncanny similarities you know there have been multiple of them that have been studied they're all like pretty similar generally but even with james arthur springer and james edward lewis there are key differences you know one of them married a third time they they did some different shit there, there are differences in identical twins, which automatically rules out that genetics are 100% deterministic. Because identical twins share 100% of their genetics. It's this, when the same egg splits into two embryos or whatever the fuck. So, if they turn out different, that means environment definitely plays a role. For example, there are twins named Anne and Judy from Wales who were separated at birth and they ended up growing up in different socioeconomic backgrounds but in the same country and you know one of them was like a street kid and one of them was like a super academic kid and they ended up you know making different levels of money and having pretty different personalities but even still their face was still the same there have been identical twins raised on opposite sides of the world in just completely different environments and their face and bodies still end up being very similar which means that you know physically it makes sense, you know, it's intuitive. Physically, that's just genetic. Unless one of the twins would have, like, taken roids and gone heavy on bodybuilding or, you know, done the opposite, like, stuffed their face with donuts. But the thing is, like, the inclinations to do that are also genetic. So that's when it gets really murky. Either way, what geneticists have concluded is that genetics don't predetermine, but predispose, right? So they're probabilistic, not deterministic. In other words, like, they don't determine the outcome of the game, but they determine your hand. And if we're talking about probability, what you get in your hand uh, makes the chances of how you will do in the game, but it's not like set in stone, you know? You could really play those cards right. So if we're being like very technical with the definition, genetic determinism isn't real. But, you know, the implications of it do sort of still remain. This does not at all mean that genetics don't matter, because they definitely do, you know? In terms of individual factors that impact your life, genetics have to be at the top. They have to be number one. Choosing the right parents is the most important decision that you could ever make. It's just not everything, you know, and it's very complicated and there's a lot of different variables that can impact how you turn out. And this is because genes can express themselves based on their environment. Uh, it's this new thing they, they have called epigenetics. Based on outside environmental factors, your genes will, will come out in a different way. For example, you could have this sort of uh, this dormant muscle building gene. And if you never worked out, you'll never find it. But if you start to, you know, lift, you could find you have, like, very good muscle building genetics get jacked as fuck. But it won't come out if you, like, live a very sedentary lifestyle. But even this has limits, you know, especially physically. It's not like if I were to go to Brazil, you know, change my environment, I'd suddenly, you know, my dick would get bigger or something. It's not like if I start working out, I'll get four inches taller. The truth of the matter is genetics are a big deal and they are restrictive. You are bound by your genetics to a high degree, especially when you consider, you know, people treat you differently based on your genetics, and scientifically, they largely determine your success in your career, in relationships, in life in general. Knowing this and acting accordingly can give you a, a higher level of control. The degree of this control is debatable, and it also is variable. It varies from person to person. But let me just give you the science. Physically, what is genetic is pretty intuitive. Your face, very genetic. 
the only thing you could do to change that if you get surgery you can change uh your overall like body fat percentage to make your face more lean and you could do skin care like that's about it height and weight are mostly genetic your diet and uh, sleep growing up will impact your height and you can change your weight you know based on how much you're eating so you have you have some level of control then again you know your muscle building is also very genetic no matter how much i work out i'm not really gonna be like a super buff dude i'm just sort of a wiry guy you know and it's cool for me that 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 means i won't develop some sort of body dysmorphia and shit it's why it's important you know this so you don't blame yourself and hate yourself and you just accept it but mentally is where it gets interesting and also pretty brutal there are studies that have found happiness has a large inheritable quality to it so does intelligence so does your political orientation your religiosity all of these things have a large genetic component but the thing about these heritability figures is that they're very different because they're based off the population that they've been measured in so they vary wildly you know you'll hear that iq has a heritability of 70 percent on average but if you go to populations communities around harvard it's above 90 percent and if you go to you know detroit where there's a lot of like drug problems it's close to zero percent so this this shows that environment actually has a larger uh, play in mental components like intelligence than genetics for example to predict whether or not someone believes in god it's more important to know if they were born in texas than what their genes are but here's the kicker most of the differences in your gene expression the variation physically or mentally happens when you are zero to three years old when you're super young when you don't have any control over your environment and it keeps on going down so by the time you're an adult and you really have the the influence to change where you are change your environments a lot of things have solidified by then and it's you know it's still a debate scientifically like how much you can change by altering your environments when you're grown but you know the brain is still plastic but not nearly as much as it was when you were young and this leads to a question about determinism in general not even genetic but when you combine genetics and environment besides your genetics which you don't choose and your environment when you're young and you can't change it so you don't choose that either what else is there what else inf is there that influences your physicality your personality all those things that will go on to determine your whole life what else is there besides genetics and environment you could logically say there is nothing else like that's it we're pretty much automatons in that way you look at your genes you look at your environment and you could trace back all of the variables that made you who you are and you didn't choose any of them i'm not saying that's what i believe but i understand it and I respect it. I've had this conversation multiple times when I've tried to uh, black pill people, but it's like, if you were born white in the early 1800s in the American South, you would be racist. You'd like to think you're the one who's like, no, I would have realized it's wrong. I would have gone against, like, no, you wouldn't have. The thought wouldn't even have occurred to you. Your genes and your environment that would have made what you believed <laughs> you know you wouldn't have the percep you wouldn't have the perspective to see beyond that the stance that genes and environment are everything it's hard to argue with you know i personally don't believe that but i respect it and i totally understand that standpoint i just choose to believe there's something else now this is purely just my opinion and i'm not even like super confident about it this is just like how i feel sort of but i think um that something is what separates humans from other animals i think animals are purely genes and environment but you know the human ape which is just more, much more complex i think that's what consciousness is what's the purpose of it if not to you know be self-aware and look at these things and be able to ascend them to some degree i think it's a very small degree you know i think we're still mostly automatons but 
less so than than other animals you know they just work according to nature but even if i'm working under this assumption that that's what consciousness is this thing that allows you to ascend your genetics and environment a little bit it's still brutal you can work extra hard and still be bested by someone who was just born better i guess the life fuel there is that people who are born like super gifted usually develop a fixed mindset or whatever it's like the tortoise in the hair thing um but also there are people who don't do that there are people who are just like 100 percent better than you lebron james was born to be like a super athlete i couldn't be as good as him no matter how much i practiced i'm just not built that way stephen hawking was born to do science saddam hussein was born to do war crimes you know in that way i guess i was born to fuck and you're never going to be able to fuck as much or as hard as I do. And you have to accept that because I was just made to fuck. Anyways, that's a lot of overthinking shit. The application of it, it couldn't be any other way. You know, imagine people could just completely change their, like, their looks and personality at the drop of the dime. It, that shit wouldn't work. You have to be born and have like a certain flow to your actions. If you want to change your personality or certain mental components, you know, things like your IQ, a lot of that gene expression probably does happen when you're young, but I think you could change it to some degree. If you really want to change your personality, you have to do things and be in places that are like completely out of your wheelhouse. And that will, will code new proteins in your brain that will really it'll change how you act. That's what Walter Michelle found with his personality coefficient is that it's personality is mostly dependent on environment rather than like some underlying character you have. It don't got to be that complicated. Just stay on your grind, accept what you can't control. I still think you should, you should try to improve yourself. Try to see, you know, try to be the best person you could be. You know, what's the alternative? Are you just texting underage girls? You don't need to do that. Keep on keep on giving it your all baby by the way i really appreciate the way the the channel has grown if you relate to me that's kind of cool because i feel like i'm uh i'm being myself and a lot of people don't understand it so if if you if you get it that's pretty sick and i appreciate you by the time this came out i probably made a discord uh, like an instagram page for this channel and uh uh, what else? A second channel where I just talk and don't edit it. So, yeah, check those out if you uh, if you want daddy, if you want more of daddy. If you don't want more of daddy, I completely understand.